Welcome superstar Shah Rukh Khan to USA and to Houston. You're about to kickstart Slam. First tell me, why Slam, the name? I don't know. It was just still a... Um, I, I think the producers and everybody was talking about what uh, show, lights, action, music or stuff like that. But I just thought it's nice. It's just a nice word which stands alone. And uh, then I hear younger people saying we got slammed. We, uh, you know, when you when you find something really cool and nice. So just like that, I, I just like the idea of slam with a with an exclamation mark. And then the whole team liked it. So no specific reason. Therefore, it was born. So was yeah, slam. Sounds great. Now you're coming to USA in concert after 10 years. There hasn't been a big concert since then. How are you feeling at this moment? Oh, I, I don't remember the last one actually. I know we've done a lot of variations of Temptations and um, there was a, a format then that we had worked out. This being a show with a lot more stars and uh, a little more related to even Happy New Year. And I, I don't know how the format is going to be uh, similar to that one. I didn't want it to be similar, but I think the things that we can control, we've tried to control. We've tried to kind of make the production a little higher and better because it's accessible now. The resources are better and, um, and, and still retain uh, the inherent quality of Bollywood, which is to entertain, interact, dancing and, you know, let everyone have a nice time. I mean, my, my idea of a show has never been just come and sing and dance, which is there, obviously. But to be able to give people a chance to interact and feel happy about those two hours. You know, they should feel it was a, it was like a nice party. And that's the whole idea. So it would be similar in those terms. But I'm very excited. I don't know if I can still hold on to two hours of dancing. I'll find out if I have the stamina. But I have uh, uh, an amazing uh, set of people who are doing the show. So I think a lot of energy, a lot of happiness, and hopefully people will like it as much as Temptations. Absolutely. And I believe this was your idea years ago when you were just starting Happy New Year. You know, actually, a lot of people keep saying, do a show. And to do a show, you need to be together for a month, month and a half. The kind of time that you normally don't get. You know, even if you ask all the artists, and they're all wonderful, they would all like to participate in a world tour. But you know, to get that kind of time, I, I, I don't know if everybody has it or not. Here was a movie with a lot of stars in it and all friends and we were spending time together whether we liked it or not. So, you know, you got to know each other. Uh, one of the beliefs I have is performing on stage can only happen if you get along well with each other. Each one is a professional. Even if you don't get along, they'll do their job. But I think that special extra happens when people are happy and loving and helping each other out, judging and saying, Shah Rukh, this is no good. And, Abhishek telling, um, say, Farah, no, no, I'd like to do the show like this. If everyone becomes one with the show. So we had that kind of team spirit. So when I started shooting the first time in Dubai, one realized in the evenings, post pack up or during the shoot also, uh, that, you know, here is a set of people who are wanting to better each other, not just themselves. And uh, see, singing, dancing and the show part, we all do, we're professional actors, we'll do all that. But that feeling that, that makes the show extra, uh, started permeating very fast in the film shooting, the first four, five days only. So I just started thinking, you know what, if you guys are able to take that time out, get a couple of weeks so that we can go and, you know, normally the world tour has a longer 18 shows or something. I said, even if we get a weekend, let's try and do this and then inshallah, post the film. We will still like to be together, which we really do even now. And, uh, and you will continue doing the slam tour all over the world. You play a dual role in this film. You're a producer and the actor in the film. And I think for the first time, there's such a big ensemble star cast. And I keep hearing about the camaraderie and your enigmatic uh, chemistry between everyone. How do you feel? Well, I'm not the producer of the company, it's Red Chili's. I, I just uh, happen to be the promoter of the company. So it's wrong actually to be, you know, the, putting me as the producer. I hardly know anything about production. So we have Kareem and Karuna and uh, Venki who handle the company and this part of the filmmaking. It's a difficult film to make. And I would like to say that at the onset. It's not a film that can be easily made. It's got two strange genres tied up together. It's a big film to make. And I'm glad that actually he's got this, op got this opportunity to uh, do it. But even if I was just an actor, uh, somewhere down the line being perhaps uh, one of the people who has done maximum number of years in films, you know, uh, compared to say even Bhavan Sir or Abhishek or Deepika, Vivan and Solo, uh, and even Farah for that matter, uh, like we kind of started together. I think it becomes my duty that, you know, uh, the senior most person kind of holds everyone together because when you have seven artists, when you have such a difficult film, when you have so much happening, and um, I, I think it becomes important that one person becomes like the family head and makes everyone feel nice and good. And I think that job uh, 
I do well. I've got three babies, yes. Yes, so I can look after three babies. So I have to look after five in this one. I'm so getting ready for two more. Yeah. <laughs> so you think fatherhood helped you? Most oh, certainly it does. I I think of Abhishek like my uh, child, Vivan, who I just got to know. Uh, Sonu, who's very sweet. Uh, Bhavan sir is this uh, you know dignified presence who's uh, always there to help you out and encourage you. You know you sometimes need this voice of reason and encouragement somewhere in the back in his bass voice, and uh, of course Deepika. And Farah also, you know, Farah is also like a kid on set sometimes, so you have to control her. So yeah, it does help. So speaking of Deepika, she's gorgeous, of course, and you and her share a fantastic on-screen chemistry. What do you think is that magical quotient? It's just that I'm taller than her, <laughs> and that kind of <laughs> makes it work. Uh, she's wonderful. She's a fantastic artist, and you know, she, uh, even when we started, I don't think you know people keep saying that Farah launched her, and <clears throat> I was the hero who launched her. Um, I do remember the first time when we had shot with her. Uh, Mr. Bachchan was there near the sets, and I went and showed her, showed him some of the stuff we shot with in the film, actually. And the first thing he said was, "You know, this lady is going to be a big star," uh, and she already was. It's not; she just needed a platform. So we happened to be there. The film turned out well, and even when the film was releasing, I said, "I think 60% of the uh, reason for the success of Om Shanti Ho is that we had a presence of this uh, new actor, you know, who's got an amazing persona." And over the years, uh, without sounding patronizing, I think she's really honed her craft, and she's fantastic at what she does. She's an asset to every film that she participates in. So I think we are fortunate, and she's a friend. So we are fortunate to have her in this film. And again, she's the only lady in the film, so to say. You know, between these five men, and uh, perhaps uh, between her and Abhishek, the two standout roles. And you need people who do justice to that. So you have perhaps two of the finest actors for that role. Perhaps otherwise also. You know, to do justice to uh, because the film works because of the beliefs of these two uh, in indifferent uh, ways. Uh, when you see the film, you'll understand. So she does really form the peg of the film. She forms the spine. She forms uh, the moral code of the film, so to say. You know, she takes a stand which the five of us uh, perhaps are not good enough to take, and then we follow suit. Tell us a little bit about your character. I. Um, you know, like in a heist film, they are, they, they, most of the characters are defined already by the genre. So you have a safe cracker, which is Bumble, uh, fat fingers, magic fingers, and um, you have uh, a guy who's fantastic with a computer. Uh, that's Vivan, the nerd, the hacky hacker. Uh, then you always have uh, wrong word to say maybe, but you know the the sensual, attractive interest in the film. Uh, Uh, that's the pickup. Uh, then you have a mastermind, and uh, I'm the one who brings the team uh, together. Uh, Abhishek's character is a new kind of a uh, aspect in the given classical heist uh, mold. So that's new. That's very different. That's Farah's invention for a heist film, and uh, and of course uh, Sonu plays the uh, bomb expert. So I I play the person who kind of gets them all together. But we're not thieves. We're not professional thieves. There's a reason behind it. And the line for the film is no motivation, no crime, and how they, each one of us has an individual motivation, and then finally it becomes bigger than the individual motivation, and we kind of turn around as people. You know, we don't just uh, uh, be the scalous uh, criminals or wanna be criminals. We turn around, and um, I, I think that turn around comes because of the circumstances, the things that happen in the film, and um, I'm, I'm the one who sort of brings all these experts together to do a job. So, what would you say, perhaps, is your favorite part of the film? I, I think there's a sequence in the film where we are forced to learn. The concept of the film is that we have to participate in a dance championship to be able to have access to where we want to go and steal from, and we are the world's worst dancers. <laughs> uh, so it's ironic and funny that the world's worst dancers uh, have to be in a dance championship. So there's this training part which I find very funny, uh, and it is throughout the film. Uh, and that's that's uh, kind of the nicest part of the film. When Farah was designing the film, the idea was that 99% of the people in this world don't know how to dance. So we all look up to actors, like we must be all looking up to Ritik or Abhishek or Shahid or you know uh, Govinda and saying, oh, what great dancers they are. But all of us are not such great dancers. But we love to dance. We love to dance. We love to do uh, you know, there's a party or you're happy. You just want to dance. And Indian culture has that more than anyone else in the world. We dance on the streets at the at the drop of a hat. You know, any function and we start dancing, and we dance really differently than compared to a great dancing style or technique. And the idea is that you know, uh, if you can 
if 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 you want to dance just dance and it doesn't make a difference uh if you're the worst dancer in the world as long as you're happy doing it uh that happiness will go through to other people and they'll enjoy it and that's what happens at parties you know sometimes you see this strange dancer man or woman and you start smiling because he or she is dancing with such gay abandon so uh, and 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 always there's an inspiration in the films that we like to do the idea is even if you're not best at something if you believe in it and you're happy doing it a lot of people will come along and uh, that makes me uh, that's that for me is the turn on in terms of the script apart from the lovely scenes the actors the song dancing and funny bits i think that inherent philosophy that if you can believe in something that makes you happy a lot of world will also be convinced along with you everyone's been talking about your eight pack and how well how fit you are right now tell me a little bit about your health regimen i don't have a specific health regimen i get very embarrassed talking about it to be honest i i normally remain fit throughout the year and i'm uh, and i don't let go of myself it's something that i have never done i'm 48 now and uh, i believe in very frugal eating and uh, you know just trying to exercise every day play some game and then when uh, uh, you know 8 years later when farah said that listen we did that six pack can we do it all over again so it takes me a couple of months or three months to you know uh, get a trainer which is prashant who's fantastic and you know we'll work out for 30 40 minutes and eat a little properly and that's it uh, i i i don't know you know when i read about people talking about bodybuilding and all i get embarrassed because i don't think i have a great body i i just uh, eat well and exercise a bit and um, um it did kind of looks okay <laughs> no i feel very shy talking about it and it's so sweet now sharak we all have our favorite films of yours and one of mine happened to be bill say what are some of your favorite films of yourself my favorite film is always the next one um, i don't stick on to the ones that i've done they were nice the process was beautiful i'll always cherish them but the next one is the the favorite so right now happy new year is the favorite uh but i've enjoyed doing dilwale i thought kuch kuch hota hai was nice dil se was fantastic chakde was interesting devdas was very different for me to do uh i think uh visara i didn't think it'll turn out to be the way it was because i was playing this old guy and never done it um i think om shanti om my name is khan i thought it was very special uh i really liked myself in the film which is very seldom that i like myself and um Yeah Don because it's face sexy. I find that very interesting. Yeah so I like them and I'm kabhi ha kabhi na. There are few I must be forgetting. But uh, those are favorites because apart from the process I kind of enjoyed the the result also and uh, kind of thing I don't know if I can do it all over again or not. And some of them just got done. You know you you don't realize while you're making a film it takes a life of its own the character the role the film itself and there's so many people helping you make that film special. that at that point you don't realize it at that point you're just shooting those eight hours and thinking okay I, i think i got the scene right i got the line right it's very microscopic but when it becomes bigger and you see it sometimes it surprises you you yourself surprise yourself and not because you've done some stunning job just it turned out to be very different from who you are which was perhaps the most challenging film for you as an actor i, I as an actor i don't find things challenging uh, it's my job i've been doing it for too long to now call a film challenging when i was a newcomer i would say that you know this is a very challenging role and you know i had to dig deep inside the deep recesses of my emotions and my mind and do it i'm i'm a, i'm a professional actor it's my job to do it uh, if i start making a big thing out of it it won't be as enjoyable and interesting for people to watch uh, every film that i do i think i work very hard i don't show it <clears throat> i i think it's boring for people to tell you how the recipe of a good dish that you've enjoyed is you know to start describing it you should just enjoy the food and say you know it was very nice can you cook it for us again so yeah i'll try my best to cook it again for you i'd like to keep it simple i personally it's a personal thing dislike actors discussing how they worked on roles and all unless they're co-actors discussing it with me a director discussing it with me i write a lot i i write my roles i have books filled with what character i'm going to play i make notes on my script I make uh, stand in front of mirror and practice but if I start explaining the process of my acting and the challenges I've gone through to do it it's extremely boring uh, like if I start telling myself I get bored of it so I don't like to discuss that but uh, uh every film that I do I like to believe I have left a part of me in it uh there is a little part of me in it whether it's my soul my heart my mind and then I wait for the day when all the parts will get over and then I'll wake up one morning I have no more parts to give 
and then I'll just I guess just sit back and start watching all my films. I haven't seen my films. <laughs> well, on a lighter note, in conclusion, I asked Farah what was a one secret she could tell about you that nobody knows, and she said the fact that you were never without your shoes. She thinks you sleep with your shoes on. She would know. She slept with me a few times. So. <laughs> So, can you tell us a secret about yourself that you think no one else knows? It's, it's not a secret. I don't wear slippers, and I don't like being uh, barefoot. I, I find it awkward. So, as soon as I wake up, once my feet are off the bed, they are in shoes, and they get only taken off once my shoes, my feet are off the floor. Uh, I don't know. I, I even in films when they tell me to do scenes without my shoes, I find it awkward. Uh, so I'll wear socks or I'll wear something. I, I get very awkward uh, bearing my feet. Bearing my soul is easier than bearing my feet, actually. So I, uh, yeah, so I'm conscious of that. Any other secret? But if I tell you my secret, then it won't be a secret. Um, what is not known about me? I don't use shampoo. I just wash my hair with water. Uh, that's it. I I sleep very late. I I don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, I do. I do wear my shoes most of the time. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure speaking to you as always, and have a fantastic show ahead and even a better movie and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you very much and I, uh, because I've come after such a long time to America, let me honestly tell you, I miss you and doing interviews with you. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Sweet. Bless you. Thank you.